course, so, you know, um, as far as Matt Ryan goes, uh, you know, with me, the the jury is still on him. I was very impressed, though. Um, you wait, the jury's still on on with yeah, Matt I, Ryan. I mean, I it's one of those things where I think I'll be able to tell better next year. You know, first look. Again, it's everybody seems good on the first look. Then kind of your second time around through the league, we'll see how people adjust to him. I'm curious to see how his sophomore season goes. Uh, but I was very You're impressed. You're not thinking he's going to be a Ryan Leaf bust, are you? No, not to that degree. No, I don't think he's a bust. I'm, I'm not saying that. I, I you know, uh, it's worked out for Atlanta this year. I still question the high draft pick that he was, but that's their personal decision. It's worked out. But what I was trying to say was I was impressed with the ball fake that he did today uh, when he kind of faked the handoff and did a little flipped to the other hand and threw the ball. That was very impressive. Uh, guy's running a good offense, so, uh, I mean, you know, he, he's done a great job down there. Again, we'll, we'll see what Season 2 brings, but that uh, Falcons team is, is dramatically different from what it was last year, and they got things really going in the right direction. Yeah, and by far, they're the best storyline that's going on in the NFL season so far. I mean, you think about, you know, everything that they went through, and, I mean, everyone knows about it. It doesn't need to be rehashed, you know, mm -hmm. with all the storylines that had hit the Falcons. You wonder if Arthur Blank had, like, cheated on his wife or something with how bad things had gotten. Had bad karma there. Uh, it was some ho horrible karma for Arthur Blank, who, you know, around the league, he's known as a good owner, known as a good guy, so you, you know, wonder why things like that happen. But, you know, I mean, they've been able to turn it around and did incredibly well. I mean, it was just phenomenal what the Falcons have done. And, you know what, kudos to them. And, I, to me, I think Matt Ryan is going to be a very solid NFL quarterback. I mean, he's better... He's better than what some of these other teams have, <coughs> 49ers. Um, but, you know, it, it's it's interesting to see how the Falcons have, have you know, progressed from last year to this year. Uh, Miami, 8-5 and five on the year, defeat the Buffalo Bills 16-3. to three. The Buffalo Bills are winless in the division. <laughs> winless. They have not defeated one division opponent this year. And, you know, hey, I'm, I'll be the first to say it. I was a guy that thought Buffalo was going to be a team that was going to do some things. And, you know, in, early in the season, they looked as though this was a team that was going to make some noise, especially with Tom Brady, you know, going down and being injured with the knee injury. It looked as though, you know, hey, this is a time for Buffalo to, you know, get things going. I mean, they had the mindset that, you know. Tommy Brady's got nothing on me. You know, they were going to be able to do some things and stuff like that. But, you know, here they are now, 6-7. and seven. And it's just it's just gone downhill. I mean, what has happened with the Buffalo Bills? I mean, what has happened with them? I really don't know, to be honest with you. Um, they they started off looking really really well, and it just it hasn't panned out for them in the second half of the season. Now, granted, they're in a they're in a pretty competitive division. So I mean, it's not crazy to say they haven't won a division game. It could be a lot of timing. Um, you know, Miami's playing well right now. The Jets, with the exception of the last two games, um, were playing well. New England playing well. So I think maybe Buffalo hit their stride too early. Uh, or, you know, I don't know what the case is. But, uh, I, you know, maybe the concussion to, to Edwards set them back for a little bit. I, I mean, I really don't know. They, have, they really, to me, since he missed that game, or it was one game that he missed, right? Yeah. It seemed like ever since then they just never got both oars in the water again. Um so and it, you know it's just a tough it's a tough division without you know without uh, Tom Brady there there's not that clear cut winner so that brought the level of competition down to you know kind of an even level for everybody and it just hasn't panned out for Buffalo and you mentioned the uh, 49ers beating the Jets today cannot play with them cannot win with them cannot coach with them can't do it well you're winning with the 49ers right now I mean they they've been able to squeak off a couple wins in a row here and you know they beat a Jet team. Who, let's face it, we thought that this Jet team was a team that was going to be someone to reckon with after winning, you know, against Tennessee, winning against New England, those two back-to-back -back games. But then, all of a sudden, it seemed like the Jets have, you know, came back to reality here with, you know, the way they've been, the way they've been playing the past couple weeks, getting beat by, a, you know, a Denver Bronco team that, you know, we don't know about, really. We don't know what we're going to get with them, and then losing today to San Francisco. Yeah, it's a tough loss, unquestionably tough loss for the Jets uh, this week against the 49ers, and, you know, that that week, that loss to Denver wasn't much easier either. Um, you, they're maybe kind of panning out to where they, they should be at. Um, it's interesting. Maybe they were playing a little above their heads. Uh, you know, it's it's been a wild, wild NFL season, and, you know, some of these teams now, they're just kind of, as we get closer and as games get more important, uh, you know, we're starting to see, although I will say that 
uh, Ryan and I commented earlier, there was a, a running touchdown by Brett Favre there. And uh, his agility and his nimbleness for a 120-year-old person was quite amazing. Yeah, Brett Favre can do it all, can he? Yeah, he I mean, if he's not throwing touchdowns on it, well, he's, he's no Tim Tebow, but... Oh, no, no, that's all right. Brett Favre's back and your defense is in trouble. Hey, now, hey, now, my Brett Favre's back. Boom! Other games, uh, of course, Philadelphia... <laughs> All of a sudden, has an offensive line. You didn't see a thing from Detroit's defense as the Eagles were able to beat the Giants today, 20 to 14. But you know, here's the other interesting part as well when it regards the Giants: only 88 yards rushing today for the Giants. I don't. There is. This is the first game where they have been held under 100 yards rushing. Uh, Brandon Jacobs only 52 yards rushing. Uh, uh, Derek Ward, 39 yards, and Mob Rashad, only 9 yards. So not a good day for the Giants' running attack. Now, granted, 12 of those yards were taken off because of Mario Manningham's uh, reverse in the game where he got stopped for negative 12. You take that away, the Giants did actually rush for 100 yards um, f- between the three running backs. But and the Eagles, I mean, it's it's a shame to say that, you know, that tie against Cincinnati is probably what's going to do them in and not get them in the playoffs. But, you know, the, the Eagles all of a sudden are playing with a sense of urgency. You know, the tie that happened with Cincy, McNabb getting benched, w- Westbrook is starting to get a little healthier now for the Eagles. This is a different Eagle team. This is kind of the Eagle team that we saw at the beginning of the year mm-hmm. when they gave Dallas a run for their money and was able to play the games the way they were wanting to at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said a couple times throughout the show, this was the best last place team that that there is. And they're 7-5. Um, and and five. Yeah, you know, the way they played today was phenomenal. Um, impressive. That would have already clinched the NFC West. Now, did anybody see, uh, maybe those in the chat room, because I, I don't know, I saw Brandon Jacobs went out of the game. Um, does anybody know if he ever came back in, or was he injured, or I know he went out of the game, he was limping. Which one, which game was this? Uh, this was the Eagles game. Brandon Jacobs, the running back for the Giants. Went out of the game limping. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he ever came back in. He went out in the fourth did quarter not, limping. Did not see an update on the Brandon Jacobs uh, scenario. I'll look into it a little, a little more. I'll research it, research it a bit. Um, Minnes- 